Welcome to another episode of A Lady's Garden. It's a really nice, cool, but breezy Saturday here. Um, so I'm going to take you on a little tour today of another garden bed in my back garden, and then maybe talk about a couple of the projects I'm working on. So we're standing in the front entrance of the back garden, where the arbor is, as you can see, and but we're missing one of the players of this front garden. If you look over there, you'll see that pretty trellis. And what's missing is the clematis. So a couple of weeks ago, I noticed that the clematis was looking like it was struggling a little bit. Um, that particular clematis has been in this spot for, uh, it's been probably three years, maybe almost four years. And all of a sudden, it started to lose leaves and they started to get brown and it just wasn't looking very pretty anymore. So I cut it back in hopes of maybe rejuvenating it and seeing if it come back, if it comes back. But we'll take a peek at what I saw the other day. Um, there's Bugs, family bunny with a supertunia, and you can see, well, you see a lot of weeds, but we won't, we won't focus on those. <laughs> you see the fiber optics grass that I planted around him. Let's try to get closer. So that is the fiber optics grass hasn't really grown much. I planted them um, when I planted the verbena in the circle boxwood garden. But it's, it's nice. It's cute. It's, you know, we'll see what it does. It's just an annual. So if it doesn't do too much, then, you know, I know next year not to get them. But we'll continue on the tour now. So I'm just going to stand. I'm under the arbor at this shot here. And it is just, I love it. Very, very happy, very, very excited, very pleased with this shot here. So we're going through the arbor. And this is my Japanese holly. I did not prune her um, in the springtime as I should. So now she's just a mass of beautiful Japanese, oh, I keep saying Japanese holly, Japanese maple. Oh, sorry, but Japanese maple. Japanese maple tree. Did not prune her in the spring, as I should have, but I'm still happy. She's pretty big. Let's kind of go this way. She just goes on and on and on and on and on. <laughs> and then I tucked in a little impatient, hot pink impatient back there. There's a climbing rose. Ah, I didn't prune that either <laughs> or try to train it as you can see but it, it's alive so we'll take it right there's a sedum um, that nice mound of green there's a boxwood there are some more impatience there's a hydrangea back there and guys let me say this hydrangea when I bought it probably three years ago was pink it was actually in a pot on the other side of the garden and it was pink now it's this beautiful beautiful i guess lilac -y blue color we'll get in a little closer in a sec um more impatience another boxwood to complete my trio around this pine tree let's see if we can pan up to get a little look at the pine tree not too high, but eh. so not the fullest, but still a pretty, you know, white pine here. And that ground cover is actually a volunteer. It's it's been in the garden a couple years, just kind of popping up here and there, and it it likes this spot. So what I've been doing, I was I was actually pulling it out, just you know, going and pulling it out. It's a, a ground cover, true ground cover. Um, if I were to to say one is a true ground cover, it's really dense. It's really it grows very vigorously, and as you can see, it likes this spot. So instead of taking it out and trying to mulch over it, I just let it do its thing. And I figure I can contain it if I have to, but it is, does add something extra. Let's see if we can get closer to it. So this is what it looks like close up. I don't know if it's some type of clover, 
or, or what, but it's, it's very aggressive. Um, so I, I really don't want it everywhere in a garden, but it is pretty and it is green. So we're going to work with it. If anyone knows what exactly the type of ground cover or, or it is, please let me know. Let me know. And let's take a look at the hydrangea. Okay, so there she is. Oh, my shadow. Try it again. Isn't that pretty? So pretty. It was pink. It was pink in the other part of the garden, like I mentioned. I'm assuming it has something to do with the soil under the pine tree. I mean, that would be the only other thing. Because I didn't add anything to the soil to change its color. But it likes its spot. It's it's doing it's doing nicely. I, I'm really I'm really happy with it. Okay, so let's go back on the other side because I had to shimmy myself in here to get this photo. <laughs> okay, so now we're back on the other side, the outside of the garden bed, and here are the day lilies. Um, just traditional daylilies, I believe Stella Diora, hopefully I'm saying that correctly, and let me tell you guys, these were from dividing. There were originally two daylilies, probably the size, um, yeah, was the size of just this one here, you can't really tell when one ends and one begins, and I divided these throughout the years. Daylilies aren't my favorite, favorite plant, but they're very reliable and they're very easy to divide and they take really well um, this is a part shade area you can tell because they're growing towards the light but I mean I love the foliage the grassiness of the foliage and then the bonus for me is you get these flowers you get a nice color um, flower here um, I call it plant surgery when I <laughs> divide a plant so it survived plant surgery and I think I'm going to have to divide them again. Maybe for that one spot, you see there's an empty little spot in the front, just to add another one. Uh, the pink back there behind the day lily, that is a stilby. And she's doing really well. I feel like the day lilies are taking away from her, though. Might either have to move her or... And she's happy there, so I really don't want to move her. But I definitely feel a tall evergreen would look nice. Kind of where the post of the fence is. Maybe a sky pencil. Maybe definitely a sky pencil. So let's pan this way. I see my, my pruning job on that pine tree. Might have to go back in and take that out. And go back this way. I actually had, I did have a tall structure. It was the what was that? How do you say? That post, kind of metal hanging basket post that had a basket on it. But I, I moved it because I did have the idea to put an evergreen there. And I moved that post somewhere else that I feel could have used a little extra dressing up. And here's the lamium. I love my lamium. This is called Purple Dragon. Um, there's one. You can see that missing, that needs to be there, right by the twin trees, in that little spot. I didn't mulch over here yet. I will soon. Kind of been working on that. I usually try to wait till I have my plants in place before I mulch, but we'll see. And then we have some more hostas. Going this way. And then there is, that's a limelight hydrangea. Yeah, this bed's still a work in progress. There's some, a couple of empty spaces that I want to fill. Um, clearly, you see them. <laughs> Either with more hosta, um, maybe with lamium, I'm not sure. One or the other. One or the other. Or maybe just using annuals in patients, kind of popping them around. But 
that's just a little quick mini tour of this area. And so now I'm going to show you guys the clematis. Okay, so now we're going to take a look at the clematis. This is the trellis where it once stood. And then we're just going to take a little peek of what's going on. So as I mentioned, um, it started to just not look healthy. So I just cut it back. But now, if I can, you know, I see a little green growth. Eh, just two spots. But, and it, it doesn't look alive at all except for that one little leaf that's coming out there as you can see see if i focus uh, and then there's one down there um don't know really what happened like i said it's been in this spot for about three years and it's been happy and i never really fertilized it or anything the only thing i did differently this year is that in the fall I did not cut it all the way back. So usually, in years past, I would cut it back, like as low as this in the fall. Everything would go to sleep and it would just grow from the bottom and come back up. This year, or last year, or last fall, I did not. So I don't know if, it, if that had something to do with it. I know you see the spout, the gutter spout right there. It, it I mean, it does get little little watery here. But this evergreen certainly is enjoying its life in this spot. And in the years past, the clematis did too. So I'm not sure if something just, you know, just had its time and it said, okay, I'm done. Um, but we'll see what happens. We'll, we'll see what happens. We'll be optimistic and, you know, hell, who knows, it'll come back. At least we'll, we can see the pretty trellis now. <laughs> we'll take the positives in that. Um, and then I have one more thing to share with you guys as well. All right, so we are in a very familiar spot, but I've noticed, and I'm really happy about this, the boxwoods are rebounding. Even our little guy over here that I wanted to pull out. <laughs> you can see, putting on growth, it got a little bigger. I mean, you still see those little, little tips of white leaves, but I see more green growth than I do white leaves. And I am super, super excited about that. I mean, they all are looking, you know, pretty nice. I'm really happy that I waited and I didn't just, you know, pull them out. To be quite honest with you, I wasn't going to pull them out anyway. Even if I, even if they look bad, because once you pull something out, you have to replace it. I mean, not right away, but it's kind of nice to have something in its place to take its place once you pull something out because then you're just left with a with a hole an awkward one um but i'm really excited about that and the vegetables are doing nicely we're very pleased with that but uh, overall as you know the garden is always evolving so i hope everyone has a good weekend and happy gardening fellow gardeners bye